Suppose the speed limit on a highway is 90 kilometers per hour. You have two speed trap cameras which can record the times at which the car passes the speed traps. Can you use these speed traps to find a way to catch speeding drivers? Pause the video if you'd like to think about this problem for yourself. And when you're ready, we're not going to just provide the solution, but also prove that this solution works. We're going to first simplify the problem by converting this into meters per second. One kilometer is a thousand meters, while an hour is 60 minutes. But one minute is 60 seconds. So doing the arithmetic, we obtain a hundred meters for every four seconds. This simplifies to 25 meters per second. But interestingly enough for this problem, we're going to work with 100 meters for every 4 seconds. Let's try to visualize this speed on a graph. The horizontal axis will be the amount of time in seconds, and the vertical axis would be the distance in meters traveled by a car. The car starts at 0 meters, and in 4 seconds should travel 100 meters. Suppose the car travels at a constant speed. Let's draw the car, and the car would travel from 0 meters to 100 meters in 4 seconds. Just to verify, it travels 100 meters for every 4 seconds, and therefore its speed is given by 100 meters divided by 4 seconds. This is exactly the speed limit at which the car can drive. In other words, the car has been driving at the speed limit and can be caught for speeding. However, this assumes that the car travels at a constant speed. In reality, the speed of the car could have varied as it's traveling from 0 meters to 100 meters. Perhaps it could start off a little faster before slowing down. Or it could start off with a really slow speed and eventually speed up to reach 100 meters. What we do observe here is that there is a point on the curve where if we were to draw the tangent line, which represents instantaneous speed, its gradient would match that of the 100 meters for every 4 seconds gradient. But something even more bizarre is about to happen. No matter how strange or varied the speed of the car is, there always will be a point whose gradient matches that of the original 100 meters for every 4 seconds gradient. Natural question is, is this a coincidence? Pause the video if you'd like to prove this result for yourself, and when you are ready, unpause the video to check out how this is always guaranteed. Since the basic trajectory is a straight line with gradient 25, it is going to have the equation d equals to 25t. On the other hand, the green curve which represents the actual trajectory of the car is a function. We do not know what this function is, so let's suppose this graph has equation d equals to f of t. In what seems to be a rather strange move, we're going to define the function h of t to be the difference between f of t and 25t. This measures the difference between the actual trajectory and the constant speed trajectory. The idea is that the start and the end points should have zero difference because the car starts at 0 meters and ends at 100 meters in both trajectories. Let's now plot this difference on a graph as the time progresses from 0 seconds to 4 seconds. We're going to notice something peculiar at this particular point. At the turning point of d equals to h of t, we obtain the x-coordinate of the same point where the gradient of f of t equals the gradient of the red line. Is this a coincidence? We're going to use some crucial results in calculus to show that this is not a coincidence. Firstly, we notice that there is an input c at which we obtain the maximum value. This is known as the extreme value theorem, which tells us that sufficiently nice functions, such as d equals to h of t, will always obtain its maximum. We even suspect that the gradient at this point equals to zero. After all, the gradient looks rather flat. But how do we go about proving this? If we consider some points to the left, 
the gradient of the function is positive since the slope is upward. This means that the gradient at C must not be less than zero. On the other hand, if we consider points to the right, the gradient of the curve is negative. This means that h prime of c is at most zero. But since the gradient at c is at least zero and at most zero, we must conclude that the gradient at c equals zero exactly. This arises from the fact that the start and the end points have the same function value zero. These give rise to a point with zero gradient. This is known as Rolle's theorem. But since h of t is defined by f of t minus 25t, we can differentiate on both sides. The left side would be the derivative of h at t, and the right side would be the derivative of f at t subtracted by 25. At the point c, h prime of c equals 0. So we can substitute t equals to c to obtain 0 equals to f prime of c minus 25. This tells us that the derivative of f at c equals 25 meters per second. But 25 meters per second, as we have seen, is precisely equal to 90 kilometers per hour. This means that there is a point in time c where the speed of the car, namely the derivative of f, equals 90 kilometers per hour. In other words, there is a time c at which the car really was speeding. This means that our solution is to place the two speed traps 100 meters apart from each other and take snapshots of cars passing through each point. If the car passes through the speed traps in 4 seconds or less, this tells us that there is a point at which the car is traveling at at least 90 kilometers per hour, and therefore, the car must be speeding. From a mathematical point of view, the key result is to show that there is a point at which the gradient of f equals 25. This result is an instance of the mean value theorem, which basically tells us that there is a point at which the gradient of the original function equals the average rate of change of that function. For the details, check out the document in the description box below. There is one more existence theorem that appears all the time in calculus, and if you want to check that theorem out, click on the video here.